Okay, the Angel Wars. I have little boards here, and they're kind of bulky. I don't know anything about how to merge PowerPoint with the video. So I'm not real high tech here. Um, I'm real low tech. So we're just going to do this the old school way. I am just going to rattle through this. I've already done this tape um, once, this video. I spent so much time, you know, trying to eh, in between, in between. I'm just going to lay it out there and then we're going to go back and discuss it. Okay. Here we go. I'm going to move to the side so that you can see this. Alright. Here we have Goodness. Here we have Father God, and He is above. Jesus Christ is above everything. Okay, all powers, thrones, dominions, principalities, magistrates. Okay, all of these angels carry out different functions. Sometimes they carry out messenger functions. Sometimes they uh, they go to war. Sometimes the angels are here to help people. Sometimes they were used to teach people. Um, also, angels can... They do a lot of things. They can pronounce judgments. I mean, if you look through the book of Revelation, it's all angels dropping judgments. Okay? Um, so anyway, they all have their function. Lucifer also had his own function. And it is believed, okay, I'm going to tell you what the belief is, is that Lucifer took one-third of the angels. He was able to rally up a third of the angels in order to rebel against the Most High. Um, he did this because, as they say, power in numbers, he felt like, he was going after the throne of God. That's what he wanted. And so he rallied up a third of the angels. But I'm about to give you a spin on this. And I'm going with it. Okay. A third of the angels. It is my belief that he was in charge of one third of the angels. Okay. One third of the angels were underneath Lucifer and that he decided to go to war against God not all of the angels that were under Lucifer wanted to be a part of this however collectively they all went they all took part in this rebellion against the Lord God to overtake his throne okay I'm gonna keep going I'll come back to this so as they were fighting against the Lord God, Michael and his angels, Michael is an archangel, he fought against Lucifer and his angels, Lucifer who became Satan. Okay, and he's also referred to other things in the Bible as the dragon, that great serpent. He has a lot of names, there's a lot of descriptive titles for Satan, but for the lesson, we're just going to stick with um, Lucifer until he's judged to the earth. Okay, so anyway, he's fighting against Michael and his angels, and the scripture says that he did not prevail, which means that Michael and his angels fought off the attack. They won that round. And then what happened is the... Um, the angels were brought under judgment with Lucifer under the Most High, God, in his court. Um, on my chart, I have kind of, I just, it's kind of a cute little uh, title, I believe. It's funny to me. Um, Zen Garcia coined it. It's the Federation of Light Court. So that's why I've got that on here. It's kind of cute. Okay, Federation of Light Court. So they go before the court and judgment's pronounced on them. And when this judgment is pronounced, you've got two things going on here. You have the group of angels that are repentant 
because they didn't want to be a part of this war. They did not want to do it, but they did it anyway from fear. They just, they did what they were told. And uh, they got scared, they did it. They got sucked into it, okay? And then you have the angels over here uh, that definitely wanted to back Lucifer. They were all in. And so all of them, when they fought against Michael, lost. So now they're in court, and now they have been getting a pronouncement of judgment. And that judgment was that, I'm going to start from the bottom first, that they would be cast to the earth, that they would become mortal men, and that they would drink of the cup of forgetfulness. Now, what do I mean by all this? Well, they were told all those angels. See, the first thing that I want you to know is that all those angels up in the heavenlies, those are God's children. You know, they're his. They're his children. And when the war took place in the heaven, that was a third of his children that came after that throne and rebelled with Lucifer. Okay? This is like one of his right-hand entities coming up against him okay along with a third of his children in the heavenlies that's that's bad and knowing you know that that some of them didn't want to do it they did as they were ordered underneath their commander lucifer commanded them he was their commander he was in charge of them they did they took their marching orders and they did it and they didn't want to some of them and others did. Okay, so at the point of being redundant here, I'm just going to move on. So then, when they lose, they're put under judgment. And when they're put under judgment, they are told that they are going to be cast to the earth. They're told that they are going to drink of the cup of forgetfulness. And they are told that they are going to become mortal men. Okay? Um, <clears throat> first of all, uh, the first thing I want to do is I want to look at the scripture in, um, no, this is where I'm going to go with this. Let's pull up the book of John, okay? We're going to look at the gospel of John, and let's go to chapter 1034. Because I'm about ready to drop a bomb on you. And I'm just going with it. I'm not going to beat around the bush. We're just going to do this thing. I learned this from Jonathan Cleck. This has really opened up my eyes to some other things. And um, now I'm glad I understand it. I rejected this. I'm going to just tell you right now. Uh, back in 2010, when he was talking about this, I rejected it. I was like, oh my gosh, now you've just gone too far. And I quit listening. I went on. I've, I've always researched, researched, looked for information, wanted to know about biblical things. So anyway, um, online, I was making a comment on a video once. Something on YouTube. I make a lot of comments on YouTube. And... Somebody, I was talking about Cain, I was talking about the Garden of Eden, and trying to explain my understanding of it, which was a correct understanding. But this person came along and explained to me what I'm about to tell you, to where it just, the light bulb went on in my head. It was like, wow, I just... You know, and then when I went back to reread the comment, it was gone. They had erased all their comments off of that whole strand of comments under a particular video. But the light bulb went on. So I went back and I looked up Jonathan Cluck a couple of years ago, and I have just been, I've learned a lot. Um, it makes sense to me now. But what I'm about to tell you um, is something sort of new. And then also um, something kind of old. Something old, something new. Okay, so let's just get to it. I'm not going to beat around the bush. Let's go to John chapter 10. Gospel of John. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Alright. And where 
we're going to pick up, well, I think we're going to go to verse 30. Yes, I'm going to read something. And this is a dialogue between Jesus Christ and the Jews. Okay? I and my Father are one. Then the Jews took up stones again to stone him. Jesus answered, Many good works have I showed you from my Father. For which of these good works do you stone me? The Jews answered him, saying, For a good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy. And because that thou, being a man, makest thyself God. Jesus answered them, Is it not written in your law? I said, Ye are gods? If he called them gods, unto whom the word of God came, and the scripture cannot be broken, say ye of him who the Father has sanctified and sent into the world, thou blasphemest, because I said, I am the Son of God? Okay, do you understand what I just read here? <laughs> this I've heard pastors try to explain this one. And they they really don't have anything to back it with. They'll say, you're gods, you're gods, you know. But they don't have anything to go with it. And then you get the fundamentalists that come along and say, these people are heretics. They're saying they're God. You know, that's not what the Bible's telling them. Yet they don't offer anything as to what that scripture means either. It's as though, you know, no matter what they know of their Bible, whenever they get to this verse, they like to skip past it because they don't want to be caught, you know, teaching something wrong. And I get that. Okay. Well, let's see. What were they talking about here? And this I learned from Jonathan Cleck. Okay. I and my Father are one. Okay? Here's another instance. Jesus never talks about plural. I and the Father are one. We are not plural. We are not let us make man in our image. Okay? They are singular. Okay. Then the Jews took up stones to stone him. They got mad when he said he and his Father are one. They knew who they, he was talking about. He was talking about um, the Most High. Jesus answered them, Many good works have I showed you from my Father. Which of those works do you stone me for? Okay, I've been showing you nothing but good works. Why are you stoning me? Which, what did I do? Okay, and then the Jews answered him saying um, that it was not for good works that they were stoning him, but for blasphemy. And because thou, that thou, being a man, makest thyself God. You're claiming to be God and you're only a man. That's what they're saying. We're stoning you for blasphemy. And then Jesus turns around and he says, Is it not written in your law? What law is he talking about? He's talking about the scriptural laws. Of the Old Testament that's what he's talking about he's saying that in their own scriptures okay he's talking about it's in their own scriptures and what's funny is how he words this he says I said you know he's letting them know I was here before I was here okay Jesus answered them is it not written in your law I said you are God with a small g. He's calling them gods. Okay? And it says, And if he called them gods, whom the word of God came, and the scripture cannot be broken, he's saying, this is the absolute truth. And those scriptures can't be broken. They're gods, with a small g. Say ye of him who the Father has sanctified and sent into the world that I blaspheme because I say I'm the Son of God? Okay. Anyway, what scriptures is he talking about that says that they are gods? And he is not pointing to them and saying ye are gods because they're Jews. It was the scriptures they read, but they were man just like the rest of us. We're all Adamites. So were they. Okay. So... Um, who are gods? 
humanity, our gods, with a small g? Who are gods? You know, the Jews weren't any different than us, where we are in our learning right now. Okay? All right. Let's go to Psalm 82. I am just going to read through this. First, I'm going to do verse 1, and then I'm going to skip down. God standeth in the congregation of the mighty. He judgeth among the gods. Small g. Skip down. We're going to go to verse 5. They know not, neither will they understand. They walk in in darkness. Who's they? All of the foundations of the earth are out of course. Which means it ain't the way it started. It's messed up. It's out of course. It's not the order that he made it to be in. Verse 6. I have said. Who has said? Who has said? It must be Jesus Christ because Jesus said that it was him that said this in the scriptures. Okay. I have said ye are gods and all of you are children of the Most High. Who are the children of the Most High? The angels are children of the Most High. And he says, But ye shall die like men, and fall like one of the princes. Okay, this one of the princes, I just got done reading to you in the last segment in Ezekiel. The prince of Tyre. Who is that? That was Lucifer. That's one of the princes that he's talking about here. He is the prince of the power of the air. Okay, he's talking about Lucifer. You're going to die like him. He says, I have said, ye are gods. Small g. And all of you are children of the Most High. He's talking to the angels here. And then he says, but ye shall die like men and fall like one of the princes. Now I'm going to explain. Now I'm going to get into this explanation. Okay, and I'm just going to hit it. All right. So these angels were given judgment. Okay, the angels were given judgment. They were told that they were going to become mortal men. And they were going to be cast to the earth. Also, they were going to drink of the cup of forgetfulness. Now I have some scriptures here that I jotted down. I think I could have done a lot better. And we're going to have to revisit this. But for the sake of time, I'm just cutting to the chase. What we just read in the book of John, he's telling the Jews when they're coming up against him and trying to nail him for blasphemy, Jesus is telling them, have I not said in your own scriptures, you are gods? So if I'm calling you gods with a small g, how is it you don't believe that I'm the son of God? Okay, and then we go to Psalm 82 and... It's talking to the angels, saying, You are gods, you are children of the Most High, but you're going to die like men. Who is he talking to? I'm just going to get to it. Those angels that warred on behalf of Satan, or Lucifer, you had the ones that wanted to do it, you had the ones that didn't want to do it. They were all under his authority prior to rebelling against the Most High. That is, I believe that the one-third of the angels that Lucifer took with him were those that he were under his authority. And some of those angels didn't want to go. Some of those angels did want to go. And when they lost, they were pronounced judgment that they would be brought to the earth, they would inhabit a human body, and they would have no remembrance of anything in the heavens prior being born into this world, they would not know anything, okay? Anything, anything at all. They would have no memory of any type of um, pre-existence, okay? None. So, upon coming to the earth, it would be in this judgment, and this is how good our Lord is. He knew, these were his children, and he knew that his children, not all of them, wanted to be a part of it. 
but they had to have judgment, and a judgment was pronounced on all. They were all guilty of the same thing. So, those angels that were cast to the earth are you and I. We are the fallen. All of us, everybody, everyone in humanity that is born on this planet, we are here with no memory of our past. Um, I want to bring a word to your mind that um, you maybe never paid much attention to. You know, the Bible says that um, the Bible talks about us being reconciled back to the Father. Reconciled. What does reconciled mean? Reconciled means you're being brought back. You cannot be reconciled to someone you did not know before. We knew the Father before. And we sinned. We ended up here on this earth. I've often in my life, I wonder how could I be uh, responsible for something somebody else did. If Adam and Eve sinned, why am I paying for it? You know, and um, you know, I've always had all these questions. How unfair that God would um, do this to all of humanity just because of what one person did. Well, the fact is, we all sinned. That is how we got here. Um, we have taken on flesh bodies. I'm going to explain this as easy as I can. We're on a prison planet. This world was never meant to be your home, ever. You weren't even supposed to be on this planet. Do you know that? You weren't supposed to be here. And Satan rules over this planet. This is his territory. Okay? You were cast here, along with Lucifer, who became Satan. You were cast to the earth. You were never meant to be here. You weren't supposed to be here making the most of this life and getting your best life now. That is not why you were put here on this earth. You were put in a prison. Okay? This is prison. We're exiles. We are exiles on this planet. We are awaiting judgment. Our flesh is our prison suit, and we I'm going to be all over this uh, when we get into the story of Adam and Eve. But that's what I'm trying to tell you, is that we were cast here, we were cast to this planet as exiles. We took on flesh bodies, and we await the final judgment, okay? Those who are repentant and come to the truth of Jesus Christ, they are the wheat. Those who remain in rebellion, they are the tares. And when Judgment Day comes, guess who's going to be the jurors? The jurors are going to, to be the jurors over the tares who are under judgment and e who will be under judgment and eternal damnation. You know, you ever hear the term killing off the jury? Guess what Satan's doing? He's killing off the jury. Every time he can yank a Christian down from their walk with God, he has yanked one of the jury members out. Yes, he has. So here we are. We're in judgment right now. We are on this earth, and we have no memory of nothing. It is up to us in this lifetime to find the truth. And when Jesus Christ calls us to get the truth through him, that is how we we are reconciled back to the Father is through Jesus Christ and what Jesus Christ did when he died on the cross. We're going to go get into all that. We're even going to get into how on earth did we end up in flesh bodies. Okay? How did we get cast to the earth? You know, those angels weren't cast to the earth. Um, they weren't cast to the earth in the angelic bodies. We do know that there are demons. We do know there are disembodied spirits. I am going to get into all of that. Also, I want you to remember that the whole time we're talking about this, we still have pre-Adamites. We still have pre-Adamites that we haven't even discussed yet. Okay? So, anyway, that's it. 
You know, we sinned. We're not here because of what somebody else did. We're here because of what we did. And I'm going to tell you in the next video, we are going to get into what happened in the Garden of Eden. And we're going to find out exactly how everything I just described to you took place. Okay? Lucifer was not jealous of mankind. He never was. Mankind wasn't there until after he became Satan. Lucifer was jealous of Jesus Christ. Uh, for more information on what I just told you, if you want somebody that's going to depth and more proof and into all of this, you can go to the Zen Garcia channel. He has a DVD he just released called You Are Exiles. And he lays it. He lays the whole groundwork. He lays it all out for you. I'm giving you the crash course because we need to know this. People need to know this. So I'm going to be like a traffic guard. I'm just telling you where to go to get more information. Anyway, with that, I am going to say be blessed.